Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. It's been a long time. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Mateus. Um, on this channel, I talk about software engineering and a lot of Laravel. And on this video, I'm going to talk about queues and task scheduling. I recently wrote a blog post called Scaling and Monolith. And a lot of that was about queues, about queues and task, task scheduling. So I wanted to do this video specifically on that. Um, to introduce this concept to people who do not know about it and maybe go a little bit further um, on the knowledge piece uh, for those of you who do know a little bit about queues and task scheduling. So a queue is used to process something asynchronously. Now, what is that something? It could be lots of things and we're going to cover that. But before we talk about queues specifically, let's take a look at how a request is usually processed by um, an application. So let's use PHP as an example. A client makes a request, that request goes into a server, Nginx, for instance. Then that request goes into PHP FPM, which is a process manager. And then that request hits PHP, your application. And on your application, you might make lots of calls. You might call a database, you might call a third-party API, you might call an external process. So if you have a bottleneck on that piece, that is going to slow down your entire application, the entire request. It's going to hang. Why? Because you have a synchronous process, a synchronous call, let's say a database or a third-party API. And for instance, if you want to send an SMS and you have to hit Twilio, and for some reason Twilio API takes one second to respond, then you're adding an additional second um, of delay to that request, to that request's response. The same goes to a database. Let's say your database is taking a while to respond, that request is going to hang until your database responds, and then your script can proceed. Another problem is, let's say that API call fails. Um, sure, you can retry it. Maybe you have your program set to retry three times, and then if none of those times work, uh, you want to send a response saying, hey, uh, this didn't work out. Now, that is usually fine, but for instance, taking SMS again as an example, maybe Twilio is down and you still want to send your SMSs. If you try it three times, in, I don't know, in a second interval or something like that, and still fails, you're gonna discard that SMS, that might not be the best option. With a queue, you can schedule the task, the task of sending an SMS. You can schedule it, um, or to be more precise, you can handle it asynchronously. You can take the task and process it at a later time. Now, later time might actually mean just, you know, at that exact same time, but you have to take it off your application process you put it on something, that something is a driver. So it could be a database, it could be Redis, it could be a file, anything. You put it there for a while, and then a worker picks that up and processes it. There are lots of benefits. The first one is that you can respond faster. So you don't have to wait for the API call to be made. You don't have to wait for something to happen to give the client a response. You can give it straight away and say, hey, you, got, you want to send SMS. So I have my phone here, which has the flashlight on. I don't know why. So instead of, you know, Mateus, uh, can, you, can, you tax the, can you tax this number? And I go, you know, wait a while to tax it. I can instead say, um, hey, I have Jack here. And I say, I don't actually have Jack, but let's say he, he exists and he's here. I can say, hey, Jack, uh, tax this number. And then I come back to the client and say, hey, um, someone's going to tax it. So first you have that benefit. The second benefit is failures become less of a problem or more manageable. They're not as catastrophic as they would be. Because since you can handle the task somewhere else, you can also handle it differently. You don't have to worry about giving the client a response. So maybe you want to do uh, larger intervals. Maybe you want to retry the tasks that failed. So those are some, th those are things that you can do. But I mean, you get the concept. The concept is, the idea is, you don't want to do something synchronously. You want to give the client a response real quick and then handle that at a later moment. There are several other benefits. Think with me, let's say you want to import a CSV. If that CSV has a hundred lines, maybe a thousand lines, that's usually fine. You can process that in, in the request. It's not a, a huge computing problem. Now, if you have a million lines or 10 million lines, things start to become complicated because how are you going to process all of that in that singles request and give the client an answer? So what you can do is also queue that. You can actually break that down into smaller chunks and queue all of them and have a worker pick them up. So a queue usually works like that. You put something into a queue, we're gonna call it a job, and then you have a worker, which may be an entirely separate app, 
but it also might be the same app running in another process comes and picks the job up and says, hey, I'm going to process that. So that happens asynchronously. Take a look at this image. You have an application that's pushing a job to a queue. The queue is basically our stars device. It could be Redis, it could be MySQL, it could be a file, but we need a place to add information. We add that information into the queue and then another application, which might actually be the same application running in a different process. For instance, take Laravel or take Rails with Sidekick. It's still the same application, but doing different things. It comes and picks those jobs up. Now, you have several benefits here. The first one is that scaling is really easy, especially horizontal scaling, since you can just add more workers to a queue. You can also have multiple queues. You don't have you don't need to have only one queue. You can have, for instance, let's take the SMS, let's take the app that I mentioned on my blog post as an example. We had queues to process outbound messages, and we also had a queue to process CSVs. And since the outbound messages were a little bit more uh, demanding and frequently and frequent, sorry, we assign more workers for that queue, a lot more than we did for the CSVs. That not only allows you to scale pretty easily, but also to balance those workers between queues. For instance, if we're not doing a lot of CSV imports, so we can assign those to outbound processing or something like that. Not only that, but as I mentioned, um, dealing with failures is a little bit easier. Let's say Twilio is off, it's down, and none of the messages were sent. I can wait a little bit and I can retry those at a later time. I still have access to all of the failed messages, to all of the failed jobs. Of course, there's a retention period, but the point is, if jobs failed for some reason, let's say it was the code, I can fix the code, push it, and rerun the jobs. If it was a provider, I can also rerun it at another time. Not only that, but it's also so much easier to understand what's going on in the application, since I can see what's succeeding, I can see what's failing, I can see the throughput, all of that using queues. Now, I said that you add information, that you add, in, you, you push a message to the queue with certain information. What is that information? Well, it could be anything. It could be a JSON payload, it could be a string. It's anything that you want. When we're talking about uh, frameworks like Laravel or Rails with Sidekick, there's context. So since the application itself is gonna process the queue, taking Laravel, for example, you have your Laravel app pushing something to the queue, and you also have your Laravel app consuming the queue. Laravel automatically adds some context to the information it adds to the queue. For instance, take a look at this JSON payload. This was added automatically by Laravel through Laravel's API, Laravel's queue API, to a Radis storage provider. So we're pushing that into Radis, and you can see that it already has its JSON with some keys. It already gives Laravel some context to process that. But it's just a JSON payload. You could actually copy um, how Laravel handles that and use another app in Go maybe to process that. But the point is, it's just JSON payload. In this situation, we are giving enough context for Laravel to understand what it needs to do with that. But you can pass anything to a queue. You can pass whatever JSON payload you want. You can pass whatever string payload you want. And if you're not using Laravel, if you're using your own something you wrote, or if you're using um, Kafka as a queue, you can pass your payload and you can have other applications, which might not even be in the same language, understand that and do something with the data. But the point is that you're moving things from your application from being handled synchronously, you're pushing that into uh, a middleman, the queue, and then you have one or more applications consuming from the queue. So let's take a look now at a request flow using queues. You can see that it's pretty much the same thing. You still have a request going through a server, going through PHP FPM, going into PHP, but now the operations that you would do synchronously, you push that into a job. You 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 know you enclosure that, you encapsulated that into a job, into a task. In Laravel context, that's a class. And then you push that into the queue. So you push some JSON payload into the queue. And then your worker, which in this scenario is also a Laravel application, understands the payload and does what it is instructed to. But that is Laravel's internal API. You don't have to follow that. If you have apps in different languages, different frameworks, that doesn't matter. You can still rely on a queue to pass messages between processes. 
I think that would be um, a good definition. So now that we are doing things asynchronously, dealing with their response is easier. We just have to say to the client that the response was okay, the request was okay, it succeeded, it was pushed into the queue, and we're gonna have a separate application. When they say separate application, it might be the same application, but a different process, handle it. And then we can also define how our queue workers are gonna handle the jobs. We can have a different configuration of retry attempts, we can have different delays, we can have a different amount of workers per queue. That's all really easy. So the question is, what happens if you push a lot of jobs into a queue? Well, that's all up to you. Like I said, you can have one queue being consumed by several workers. It could be one worker, so one job at a time. If you push 10 jobs, it's gonna process one by one, one by one. But you can also have the running in parallel. You can have several workers consuming a single queue, which means that the queue is gonna empty uh, faster. And that's pretty much how it works. So I'm gonna leave the link of the article in the description. You might wanna take a look at how we use QC scale on application. But that's pretty much, um, obviously this is a simple explanation of how task scheduling works. It's basically taking a task, which may be whatever you want. In this case, in this example, we were talking about sending uh, a text message. That's a task. And instead of processing that synchronously into your, uh, into your code, you can push that into a queue, you can push that information into a queue, um, including to whom that text message is, et cetera, and have a worker consume it. Basically, it's it's pushing messages into a middleman and then picking up those messages from that middleman. So let me know if that explanation made sense, if this video was helpful somehow, and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna see you on the next video. Bye-bye, see ya.